Good day, people of the interwebs. Now, for the coming years, I probably won't be doing a lot of videos. I'm not sure, but I really want to focus on my study of psychologist. Um, that sounds all good and nice, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But the more I study, the more I come across things that make it very clear how corrupt the field of psychology has become, how corrupt the media is, and how they kind of predicted this would happen. Now, what do I mean? Okay, first off, the example I'm going to use and the topic I'm going to talk about. The topic I'm going to talk about is feminism. Did you not know women only earn 80% of what a man earns? And this is true because they say it's true and enough people repeat it and therefore it must be true even though we have proof that it's not true, but it is true because enough people say it is. Okay. Yes, this is what's happening. And people don't like to recognize that this is what's happening, but this is what's happening. So what does this have to do with psychology? Okay, here's the thing. In, and I'm gonna have to do this by heart and I'm not really good with numbers, but in the 1950s, somewhere, 1951 probably, there was this research done by a psychologist called Solomon Ash. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you what happened. But an experiment is not a public opinion poll. It examines behavior under the pressure of social forces, as the experiment of Solomon Ash reveals. The experiment you'll be taking part in today involves the perception of lengths of lines. As you can see here, I have a number of cards, and on each card there are several lines. Your task is a very simple one. You're to look at the line on the left and determine which of the three lines on the right is equal to it in length. All right, we'll proceed in this order. You'll give your answer. Only one of the people in the group is a real subject, the fifth person with the white t-shirt. The others are confederates of the experimenter and have been told to give wrong answers on some of the trials. The experiment begins uneventfully as subjects give their judgments. Two, 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 three, 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 three. But on the third trial, something happens. Two, two, two. Two. Uh, two. The subject denies the evidence of his own eyes and yields to group influence. One. Ash found subjects went along with the group on 37% of the critical trials. One. But he found through interviews One. that they went along with the group for different reasons. One. One. They must be right. There are four of them and one of me. Uh, one. This subject's yielding is based on a distortion of his judgment. He genuinely believes that the group is correct. One. 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 Two. One. Two. 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 I know they're wrong, but why Two. should I make waves? Two. In this case, the subject knows he is right, but goes along to avoid the discomfort of disagreeing Two. with the group. Here, the distortion is at the level of his response. Two. 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 In the previous experiment, Two. the naive subject stood alone against the group. Two. In this variation, Ash gave the naive subject a partner, here seated in the third position, who also gives the correct response. One. One, two, one, two. With a partner, yielding drops to only 5% of the critical trials compared to 37% without a partner. Although subjects report warmth and good feeling toward the partner, they typically deny that he played a role in their own independence. Two. The partnership variation shows that much of the power of the group came not merely from its numbers, but from the unanimity of its opposition. When that unanimity is punctured, the group's power is greatly reduced. Sometimes we go along with the group because what they say convinces us they are right. This is called informational conformity. But sometimes we conform because we are apprehensive that the group will disapprove if we are deviant. This is called normative conformity. 
The strength of the normative factor is shown in another variation carried out by Ash. In this variation, the subject is told that because he had arrived late, he would have to write his answers. Subjects in this private response experiment are exposed to the same amount of misleading information as other subjects, but they are immune from any possible criticism by the group. One. 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 And this enormously reduces the pressure to conform. Conformity drops by two-thirds. Ash's experiment is a classic. It reveals how people will deny what they see and submit to group pressure. It allows us not only to observe conformity, but to study the conditions that increase or reduce its occurrence. Okay, so we have lines. People have to say what line it is. Some of the people are lying because they are part of the control group. And the people that are being tested upon don't realize that the other ones are lying. So they, are, they adjust their view. They can see, really see what is real. But because the other people in the group say it's not, they start saying it's not. It's not because they believe so. It's because the group says so. And they are part of that group, whether they are aware of it or not. So when you hear people talk about, yeah, no, the 80%, no, no, that's, that's really real. You should feel sorry for that person because that person has been brainwashed and he hasn't even the faintest that this has happened because he's been led to believe a lie even though he did not realize he has led to believe a lie. Now this is not only true for feminism. There are other things left-wing things that follow the same pattern. It is true because the majority says it's so. And it's not even the majority that says it. I mean, in the test, in Solomon's test, it's the majority, obviously. But it's not the majority, it's the persistent ones. So even if the persistent ones aren't the majority, but because they are persistent, people start thinking that this is indeed the truth of it, the reality of it. Now, this is a huge problem, don't get me wrong. This is something that needs to be addressed. This is why people should know these sorts of things. They should learn to think for themselves. We should teach people not to be part of a group. And we are all part of a group. There's nothing wrong with being a group. As long as we are so whilst being aware. Because if we're not, we're being led like sheep to the slaughter. We're being brainwashed. The Solomon Ash experiment, I showed you a little bit of earlier, is quite interesting. You should read up on about it. Now, there are plenty of social experiments that have been done throughout the last century. And all of them have something interesting to say. Most of them were done at a time when the identity politics, the extreme left, did not have as big a reach in our social sciences as they have now as they have now in our media people i'm not telling you to wake up or stuff like that but i am asking you start thinking for yourself criticism as always is more than welcome like share and subscribe if you feel so inclined and i hope to see you all next time